So guys, I apologize for the quality of the, the actual news article we're about to read. Uh, we've had to use the Wayback Machine because apparently they don't want to admit they got it wrong. Well, not really, anyway. So what's happening? You might have heard about a, a post on Facebook lately, quote, We don't tip terrorists. Now the story go along the lines of there was a waiter over in Texas who reportedly received a note on his on his bill on his on his receipt saying they don't tip terrorists. Don't worry. We'll get to the good part, Washington Post. And holy shit, this is quite impressive. But let's go through the original Washington Post article, all right? Let's see the bang-up job of reporting the Washington Post has done. The bill was $108.73. His tip was zero. Why zero? The customer apparently made sure to let Carl Kaviv know. They circled his name and printed on the receipt and wrote a note. We don't tip terrorists. Cavill is half black, half white, 20 year old waiter who speaks openly about his Christian faith and plans to pursue the degree in theology. Carl was the name of my friend of the father who died in an accident. His father had thought about his that friend a lot. He liked the name, which means friend in Arabic, so he named his son after him, according to Cavill's mother. Perhaps it was her son's name, his appearance, or both that made those customers accuse Carl of being a terrorist. Jamie Swinson said, but she could never be sure. Oh, why couldn't you be sure? Did you not track them down and ask them when you were going about reporting on this? Or did you just take the word of a waiter who maybe wanted a little bit of free publicity or a few, a uh, little bit of uh, PR? Bit of advertising, you know, a little bit of a five minutes in the spotlight. Because surely you wouldn't have done that, right, Washington Post. Surely you would have gone through and checked this story out, right? <laughs> uh, you know where this is going, don't you? Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, I don't know why, the, oh, sorry, I don't know what they, they were thinking. She told the Washington Post. They saw the name, they saw him. I don't think I'd ever understand why anyone would do something like that. Mm hmm. Maybe you should ask your son. But, oh, spoilers. Cabal, a waiter from Odyssey, Texas, said the note received Sunday night from one of his tables left him speechless and sick to my stomach. The next day, he posted an image on the note on Facebook where it's since been shared 19,000 times and garnered nearly 8,000 comments, most of which were positive. I wonder what they're like now. I share this because I want people to understand that this is racism. Uh-huh. Is it really, Carl? Is it really racism? Or, you know, is it something else? <laughs> anyway. And this hatred still exists. So, oh, yes, it does. The person that wrote that note is a bad, bad boy, aren't they, Carl? Huh? Hey, we should really find the person who, who wrote that note and who's racist, because obviously they have racist thoughts. Take them out the back and beat them, right, Carl? Yeah, just, just suggesting it, YouTube. Just not suggesting we do that. We're just saying that, you know, Maybe we should punish the people that have these racist thoughts. Right, Cal? Eh? Moving along. Uh, although this there's nothing new. Oh, oh yeah, we hear about these all the time, don't we? It's still something that would test your faith, wrote Caval. I don't respond to a request for comment. So who didn't respond to a request for comment from the post? It's unknown who those customers were. Kyle redacted the personal information of the person whose credit card was used to pay for the meal. But Terry Tuna, Chief Operating Officer at Saltgrass Steakhouse, where Cavill works, said the customer is now banned from the restaurants. 
We stand by our, and support our employee, Tony said in a statement. Racism is any form is unacceptable. Yes, it is. It would be totally unacceptable, wouldn't it? Uh, some supporters have since found ways to send Kyle money to make up the tips he didn't receive. In a follow-up post on Facebook Wednesday, Cavell said thank you for those who have sent him money. Boy, I'm hoping this is not going to be a fake hoax crime because that would be fraud. Wouldn't it, Cavell? Hey? Falsely accepting money under false pretenses. That is fraud, buddy. Yeah. But hey, don't worry. Racism still exists, right? It, yeah. Racism still exists. There's no way you'd want to fake this because you wouldn't need to, would you, Cavell? Right? Hey, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But he said, I want to make it clear, there's never the, uh, the tip nor the money. It was about shedding a light on racism and starting the love of Jesus. It was about igniting conversations because I believe the real change happens when we talk about the issue and acknowledge it's there. Uh-huh. Cavell has spent the past two years at Odyssey College and was soon moved to Dallas, where he will pursue a degree in theology at Dallas Baptist University, his mother said. Similar, so Several similar incidents have been reported within the past two years. In August 2016, a waiter from blah, 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 blah. Right. So you're probably wondering, nonpartisan media, why are you talking about this? This this seems like it's a terrible thing. Why why are you reporting on it? Well, look at the end of the day. What do you know? Texas waiter faked. We don't do tips for terrorists. Note on receipts. Restaurants have said. Who did not see this coming? A waiter at Texas Steakhouse made a viral story about customers leaving him a racist note. His employees said Monday the story gained from the national attention after Caval 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 might be mispronouncing a 20-year-old server from Salt Grace Steakhouse in Odyssey, Texas, posted the now deleted image of the receipt he claimed was left for him on July 14th. On the bill, Caval's name was circled and the words we don't tip terrorists were written at the top. Cavell wrote in his post, which is deleted as of Tuesday morning, I share this, but I've already said that. Further investigation, we have learned that our employee fabricated the entire story. Terry Turner, COO of Salt Grace Steak Steakhouse, told the Otters in America in a statement. The customers have been contacted and invited back to our restaurant to dine on us. I would be telling you where to stick your free meal. But anyway, racism of any form is intolerable and will always act swiftly should it occur in any of our establishments. Falsely accusing anyone or someone of racism is equally disturbing, Turney said. Cavell also admits in the newspaper that he wrote We Don't Tip Terrorists note himself. I did write it, Cavell told the Odyssey American. I don't have an explanation. I made a mistake. There's no excuse for what I did. After sharing his post on Facebook, Cavell had received monetary donations, which he told the newspaper is now being returned. Yes, because it would be fraud if you didn't. That is why he's returning this. Do not kid yourself. He is not returning this because of he feels guilty or anything like that. He will be returning it because it is fraud. You accepted money under false pretenses. That is fraud. But anyway. Um, now, the funny thing about this whole story is that Washington Post have gone through and done a little bit of a sneaky, uh, which is why we had to actually use the Wayback Machine. So what they did was they went through and they've changed it. They've now changed it to Texas Restaurant Says Server Fabricated Story of a Racist Note. 
Update. Salt Grace City Chief uh, Operating Office Terra Tony said in a summary Monday that the employee fabricated the entire story and the uh, band customer is invited back to the restaurant. And at the end of the day, yeah. Okay. Um, so look at the end of the day. Look, obviously, I, I if we ever do a story which we find out was fake, we will put redacted over the image thumbnail. We will put redacted in the name, description, or wherever we can. Um, and we will not, we won't privatize the video um, because obviously that would be hiding it. Um, but we will remove monetization from that video. Um, we'll also, like I say, put it in comments and stuff like that that this story has been redacted. We make it very, very clear that we've redacted the story. And we have done it once or twice. I think it's once, actually. But anyway. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that the Washington Post likes to go in and edit the article. And you can't actually see the original article now. Oh, if you scroll down, I think you can, actually. Yeah, down further. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, uh, look, uh, Washington Post, you, you are a large, a large organization. You are so much bigger than my operation. I am a one-man person sitting in the study of his house reading news articles. Okay? I do more research than you. What the actual is going on? You are a large organization with employees. My employee is my cat. And I do more research than you. I do more background background work than you. I've rang people that I've got numbers for and tried to get quotes and tried to get articles and tried to go through and, and actually find out what is actually going on. And I'm in Australia. An Australian making an international call is doing more work from his study of his house for a YouTube video than you are for your business. Let that sink in. And at the end of the day, absolutely disgusting. And you should have had alarm bells ringing when they couldn't verify it. They, they didn't contact the customer. Why? Why did you not try and contact the customer? And these stories, these fake stories where you're, you're right on the receipt. No one does that. Who does that? Nobody. Nobody writes to the receipt with a racist note. And you believed it. Oh my God, you're a bunch of morons. You really are. This is why you're fake news. This is why... The mainstream media is fake. Because at the end of the day, none of you are doing your jobs. But anyway, I don't know. Guys, let me know your thoughts are in the comment section below. Do you believe the Washington Post suspected this was fake all along and just ran it because of the race baiting narrative? And uh, because it was viral? Or do you think this was legitimately an accident and they ran the story by accident, not checking into it. Is it neglect or is it intention? Let me know your thoughts are in the comment section below. If this video has been helpful, please smack a like. If you're new to the channel, welcome and subscribe. Apart from that, guys, I'll see you in the next demonetized video from YouTube. Have a great day and enjoy.